Gibraltar. Once again, the rock was the scene of hope for peace between Britain and Rhodesia. Side by side were burst the Royal Navy vessels Fearless and Kent, the neutral camps for Mr. Wilson and Mr. Smith. It was almost two years since their last meeting. This time, hopes were high for a settlement. The world's press arrived on the rock by the plane load. Had Mr. Smith and his government relented in their hardline policy? Had the effects of sanctions forced them to the conference table? That's what they had come to find out. That was what the world wanted to know. On board Fearless, Mr. Wilson appeared to be in a hopeful mood as he waited to meet the press. To achieve a settlement with Rhodesia would be a major personal victory for him and a vital credit to the Labour government. But he assured the press, if there was a settlement, it would have to be within the framework of the six principles. One of the most difficult to negotiate was progress towards African majority rule. When Mr. Smith and his negotiating team arrived after a wearying 20-hour flight from Salisbury, the atmosphere was one of hopeful expectancy. To have brought the Rhodesian Prime Minister this far towards the talks table was, in itself, quite an accomplishment. Mr. Smith, while affable, was not in a conciliatory mood. He emphasized he was still determined there should be no African majority rule for Rhodesia in his lifetime. He is 49. It seemed like deadlock before the talks had even started. But at his press conference, a ray of hope emerged when he told reporters that first prize at the table was a settlement. Anyone not of that view, he added, are probably enemies of the Western world. The two leaders met at the conference table. They had met in private also, but the going was tough.